Fred, the concept of consciousness is very controversial, very exciting in, in today's world scientifically. Many neuroscientists look upon how do we build it up from various brain functions, systems. Philosophers argue, is it fundamental, is it not? From your experience and thinking about it and working particularly in quantum mechanics, do you see consciousness as something that's built up from the more fundamental things of brain function and then kind of emerging? Or is consciousness something that is fundamental and irreducible in itself. It's fundamental and irreducible. There's no way that you can build it up. It's just like having the proton or even the quark and trying to find everything based upon it being the fundamental when the quantum field is really the fundamental, which is an invisible thing. It's the same question. The things that consciousness does are the things that we call normal awareness of whatever it is. But it itself is difficult to contemplate as it itself because it's not a thing in of itself. It doesn't have any limitation like that. So, so what to you're, me, it's irreducible. So what you're saying is that the things that consciousness does are the things that are built up or, or represented in the brain or, or, or done by the brain, exactly. but the thing itself is different. The thing itself is different. It's irreducible. It's not limited by space or time. It is more, we can see more of it, but not, if we, not actually see it when we, re, when we go down at the level of the quantum field or when we go down at a deeper level of reality, which may even be below the quantum field, which is not a material thing. It would seem that the burden of proof is on you because neuroscientists can show very strong correlations. Some would even go to causation between activities in the brain and our sensory visual, auditory, motor, that these are the things that we think about, we perceive, we do, and that you can see the representations in the brain. What you're talking about is kind of ethereal. Well, it may be ethereal, but if you actually ask materialists how they can prove from whatever they, de they, they look at that there's a willful intent operating in that body, if you can find th their way of proving that, then I would agree with them, but they can't. So one of the, the tests that you're using is willful intent. And how do you important. create, how do you have willful intent with a, in a purely materialistic world? You don't, you can't unless it's a machine and we're not machines because we're shapers of possibilities into realities. That's what quantum physics predicts. It predicts that a mind or something, an observer, which is not material, shapes materiality. We can't find any material which does what a mind can do. But long before there were any minds, certainly like ours or even like any animal, there were quantum things going on because there was a whole history of the universe, billions of years before any life formed. That's what we think. <laughs> okay, we what do you think? We believe that because what we're doing is we're looking back in time through our radio telescopes and we're making a model of it. We're looking down at atoms and molecules and making models of those things. It turns out that when you build up from material processes things which start to have the normal ways that we can see them, like... Uh, a grain of salt. Uh, those things, consciousness doesn't seem to be able to affect at all. That is, there's nothing I can willfully, by mind, make the grain of salt jump around. But when we're talking about atoms and molecules, it's a different kind of a thing. So intent, as I see it, is something that may be happening at the neuromolecular level and not necessarily at the macromolecular level. So what are the implications of that? Uh, is then willful intent, wherever it occurs, the critical factor in, in, in uh, giving us this sense that consciousness is, is a real, independent, irreducible part of the world? I think it is. And it is now, uh, I think, of an interest if willful intent can be discovered in any materialistic way. I don't think it can, but I'm not stopping anybody from looking at it. If you can find a model which is reasonable, which explains how that arises, I would be very welcome to see it. 
but I don't think it can because there's this process in quantum physics where we can't mathematize. We can't put it in a machine and make it work. We can't turn a crank and make it come out that way. We can't really see how it is that we shape possibilities, what we call compact the wave function or collapse the wave function. We can't see that process in any kind of material way. Is there anything else other than willful intent which gives uh, a robustness and uh, um, actualizes this concept of consciousness? The only thing I can think of is the necessity of there being an abstract world prior to a material world. That if we try to explain everything in terms of a material world, we end up losing a lot of stuff that we can't explain. Whereas if we assume there is an abstract mental world, the material world suddenly becomes more explainable. And then you're saying that our consciousness is somehow a reflection of that immaterial world, that more fundamental world, which has a, a more robust sense of reality than even the physical world that we imagine, which gives, which gives a, a, a corroboration to the thought that our consciousness is irreducible. It seems to be evident to me that that's where it's leading us, is that it cannot be reduced. But I would never say to anybody who wants to try to reduce it, don't stop trying. <laughs> Keep looking. I encourage research.